What's up guys? It is finally time to show some love to my over pronators out there. I know a lot of you have been asking for a best stability shoes roundup that I saw from TRE. So today I want to put together a list of all of those top supportive stable shoes coming in 2024 from all of the major brands. All right, guys, so before we get into it today, if you haven't checked out the Running Shoe Matcher tool yet, go to runningshoematcher.com. So this is a really cool tool I built that matches you with the best shoes for you based on your goals and preferences. So you can go in there, put in what type of shoe you're looking for. Yes, you can indicate that you want stable shoes. You can also choose whether you want a daily trainer, race day shoe, or tempo shoe, and we will match you with the best shoe for you. So it's live right now, and it's free. You can check it out at runningshoematcher.com, and I'll put a link in the description below. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so as I mentioned in this video, we're gonna be covering the best stable shoes for next year. Now, the stability category has seen a lot of changes over the last two to four years. While traditionally, stability shoes had the supportive post along the medial side, that inner part of the shoe to hold the foot in place, we've seen brands moving away from that sort of a setup towards these more naturally inherent stable platforms. So if you think about a shoe like the Asics Gel Kayano, that shoe in the last iteration went to the super broad base platform, which allows for more stable landings, especially in the heel area. Now there are some mixed opinions on this. Some runners like that more traditional supportive plastic feeling piece that you have that really locks the foot in there. But the trade off here is that those types of shoes are a little heavier with those big clunky plastic pieces. So these modern type of stability shoes have gone down in weight. They've also allowed to have a little bit more of a softer foam feeling than shoes of old. I know some stability runners don't love those soft foam feeling shoes. So in this roundup, I have included both the traditional stability shoes where you have those medial plastic posts and the more modernized version where you have a little bit softer foams and wider bases. All right, guys, first up, we have the Saucony Tempest 2. Now, the Saucony Tempest is one of the most loved and unique stability shoes to come out in the past few years. So instead of using that plastic medial post, it goes for a more modern stability setup, which allows it to have a core of super foam wrapped in a stable EVA. So in the middle of the shoe, you have that Power Run PB. Then the outside, you have Power Run, which is a firm standard EVA foam. So in version two, they haven't changed the midsole setup at all. They've gone with a little bit of a revised upper situation. Looks like the upper is a little bit more padded and more comfortable, but overall, if you liked what you got in the first Tempest, you will also get along with the Tempest 2. So this is now moving into the traditional stability role in the Saucony lineup, which is ironic because it does not use elements of traditional stability, but they have made some changes throughout the lineup to the guide and then also to that Saucony endorphin shift, which isn't getting another generation, which have made the Tempest one of the most viable stability options. So if you haven't tried this shoe, this is going to be a great faster daily trainer shoe. It's definitely not a race day shoe if you're a faster runner, but it is lighter than a lot of the other stability shoes out there. And with that power run PB core, it does have a nice bouncy and responsive feel. The one thing I will note is that while this is getting a second generation, I'm looking forward to seeing the prices drop on the first version of the Tempest because they haven't revised the midsole and have just done this upper refresh. It might be worth just grabbing the first Tempest at a discount, although we'll have to see if those upper changes making a little bit more padded and comfortable make a huge difference. However, in my experience, they don't tend to do that. So we might as well grab that first Tempest. Hopefully we'll start to see it fall to that 110, $100 price range. All right, guys, next up here, we have the Hoka Arahi 7. Now, this is going to be another great daily trainer. The Arahi is Hoka's stable version of their Clifton shoe. So instead of having that neutral, softer compression molded EVA there in the midsole, they add this J-frame piece. So what that's going to do is lock that heel in place, add a little bit more of a stable landing platform around the back area of the shoe so the foot's not wobbling around every time you strike. The Arahi 7 is definitely an evolution of the Arahi 6. There's nothing hugely different different about this shoe. They have gone with a little bit more of a comfortable upper here. They've also revised the design language, but they're not introducing any crazy new modern foams or tech here. So if you want a nice, comfortable, cushioned, stability daily trainer, that's not going to blow you out of the water with a bouncy ride or a super lightweight construction, then this is a really good option. I like these types of shoes, these workhorse style daily trainers. If you have a high mileage training block, say you're doing a marathon or a half marathon, you're building up and you want something that's just going to take the burden off your legs for those everyday six to eight to 10 mile runs. Arahi is a great shoe for that. 
All right, guys, next up we have the Brooks Hyperion GTS 2. This is going to be a great lightweight workout shoe. So Brooks is the only shoe brand out there that carries most of their models in neutral and stable setup. So from the Ghost to the Glycerin to this new Hyperion, they add that GTS to the end of the name, which means go to support. And that indicates that it's their stability model. So the Hyperion 2 is seeing some big changes from the Hyperion 1. It's going up in stack height four millimeters. They're also introducing a new foam in here, that DNA Flash V2, which is gonna be a lot softer than the first version of the shoe. So this is still gonna be a relatively lower stacked shoe compared to a lot of the other workout shoes with modern foams on the market. When you think about that category, there are a lot of these super foam style shoes that have 40 millimeter stack heights. This is not one of them. It's gonna be in that low 30s range and it does have a traditional medial support post on the inside of that shoe. So this is one of the most competitive, if not the fastest stability shoe on the market, there aren't a ton of dedicated stability workout shoe models. So this is gonna be a really good choice and it's coming in at a really lightweight. They couldn't confirm the exact specs, but I believe it's going to be in that low eight ounce range. So if you want something that's lightweight, that's flexible, that's not gonna be super bulky. If you want something for those workout days, those track days, maybe even tempo runs, if you don't want something with a ton of cushion, this is going to be a great choice for you. Now it's non-plated, so it's not gonna have as much snap and pop as a plastic plated shoe like the Hoka Mach X or the Socket Endorphin Speed 3, but those shoes are neutral shoes. So this is gonna be the best dedicated stability shoe that offers some balance and pop to it. All right, guys, next up here, we have the Saucony Guide 17. Now, this is a big departure from the Saucony Guide 16. In that version of the shoe, it was almost identical to the Saucony Ride, but what they've done here is they've increased the stack height, they made it more of a max cushion shoe, and they've also given it a heavily rocker profile. So to me, this seems to be taking the slot that was filled by that last generation Saucony Endorphin Shift 3, which I have right here. So the Shift 3, as you can see, is rockered. It's highly stacked with this Power on EVA foam, which is the same thing that we see in the guide. And then it had this plastic heel clip out in the back that offered some mild stability. So this one didn't have any sort of medial or lateral support post, but it did have these raised sidewalls, which they're doing in the guide 17, and then this wider base as well for support. So the Saucony Endorphin Shift is not getting a fourth generation. So people who liked this shoe, which I felt in that camp, it was nice and stable for recovery days, but had a more firm feel than a lot of the other recovery running shoes out there, which is great for a bigger runner like me, I'm 6'2 with a lower cadence. So I put a lot of force down into shoes. So if you liked this, Guide 17 is gonna be a great choice. It has a lot of those same elements, that wider base, those raised sidewalls, that power run foam, and that aggressive rocker. So like the shift, the guide is gonna be a great choice for recovery days, for slower style efforts. If you don't like a super soft shoe and need some stability, that's the shoe for you. Now compared to the Gel Kayano 30, this is likely gonna be a bit firmer, also a little bit easier to navigate. The Kayano is a lot of shoe on foot. Guide 17, while it does have that thicker stack of Power Run, isn't gonna feel as cumbersome because Power Run is firmer and a little bit easier to run in than A6 FF Blast Plus. I also really love the styling on this in that all white colorway, it looks really sick. All right guys, next up, I want to highlight another great option for recovery running. It's gonna be a little bit on the softer end. So if you don't want that firmer foam that you're gonna find in the Saucony Guide 17, you want a little bit more of a cushioned, comfy, stable ride, then the Glycerin 21 GTS is gonna be the shoe for you. So as I mentioned with the Hyperion 2 GTS, Brooks offers almost all of their models with the stable supportive lasts. So on this one, it has those medial posts, but it's still gonna offer that super comfy foam that you get in the regular glycerin. So I love the changes that they made to this version of the glycerin. The foam is super soft. I got to feel it down at TRE and it's going to have a little bit more of that traditional Brooks feel with the higher drop compared to their other max cushion shoe, which is the Brooks Ghost Max. So if you are a heel striker, if you don't mind having a little bit of a heavier shoe on your foot and you want durability and reliability, then the glycerin is a great choice. And again, if you want a softer shoe versus that firmer shoe you find in the Guide 17, glycerin is also going to be the recovery shoe for you.
All right, guys, last up here, I want to highlight an option with mild stability. So while this next model we're gonna talk about isn't exactly a dedicated stability model for over pronators, it does have some mild inherent natural elements that make it a stable shoe. So that is the Saucony Hurricane 24. This is the other shoe Saucony is introducing in the lineup to replace that Shift 3. I actually really wish they called this the Saucony Endorphin Shift 4, but I guess they see more brand equity in the Hurricane name. So this one is taking the Shift's spot in the lineup. So what you're gonna get in here is also a dual foam midsole, which Saucony has in the Tempest. But the difference here is that it's gonna be a layered approach. So there's a thick stack on top of the Saucony Power Run PB Piba foam, then a thinner slice of that EVA Power Run foam on the bottom. So what that's gonna do is gonna put that super soft foam up against your foot, give it a really nice and cushioned ride. And that firmer layer on the bottom adds a lot of stability down there and it's gonna make it a less wiggly platform when you land. And again, like the guide, like the Saucony Endorphin Shift 3, it does have those raised sidewalls so your foot sits down in the bed of the shoe cradled by that foam. Saucony is calling this their center path technology. It's almost hard for me to get that marketing speak out of my mouth, but there you go, center path technology. That's gonna lock your foot in place. So if you are a runner who just wants a very stable shoe for your recovery days, if you like max cushion shoes, but you tend to find them a little too wiggly, say you've tried the Nike Invincible and you find that one is not stable enough for you, then this is going to be a great option. I love to see Saucony incorporating more of that Piba Power Run PB foam into their shoes like they're doing here, like they're doing in the next version of the Triumph. But this is going to be a lot more stable than the Triumph because of that wider base. So if you want that top of the line, soft, bouncy foam, but also want some support, this is the shoe for you. All right, guys, there you have it. Those are the best new stability shoes for 2024. Let me know what you are excited about seeing. Let me know what I didn't include here. I'm sure I missed some stuff. So if you are staying tuned for something, maybe the Ghost 16 GTS, let me know what that is and what you are looking for in the new year. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll be back tomorrow with another video.